your entryway into the arts came through mu musical theater. Did you remember what you felt during that experience that made you want to become a storyteller? Why have you retired from musical theater? <laughs> well, I'll start with the easiest question. I've retired from musical theater because I'm not as good as the musical theater performers who are on Broadway. They are absolute athletes and incredible vocalists. And I can I can carry a tune and I can dance, but that is not the level that I <laughs> <laughs> operate on. Um, but I think like most actors go through a high school musical theater phase because that's mm. such a, a popular thing. Um, and I was kind of a big fish in a small pond. I went to a really small high school. So I got to do a lot of musical theater in, in high school and, and in elementary school before then I did some community theater with that. So I really enjoyed it. And I, I really liked to sing when I was a little kid. So that was kind of, um, I think just to get me out of the house, my mom signed me up for a musical theater summer camp when I was in middle school. And I, I do remember feeling like the thrill of being on stage in that way. And it was a big group of kids, probably like 25 or 30 doing this musical. We were double cast um, and I had a little solo and I was so thrilled. I was probably, you know, 11 or 12 years old and I was so thrilled to have a solo and I felt so, you know, excited to be a part of this production. And, and I kind of caught, caught the bug as they say in that time. Um, and then I'm, I'm pretty, I would say I'm pretty determined uh, as a person mm -hmm. and pretty singularly focused once I kind of set my sights on something. So as soon as I started performing, I was like, oh no, this is, this is it. This is what we're doing. Very similar to your character, Ben and Suzanne. You've had such a busy yeah. year with that debut feature, bringing it around to all these super festivals around the world. What has it been like for you and the entire team to see the response on such a global scale? Did anything surprise you about the reaction from the different audiences? Oh my gosh. It's been, first of all, it's just been so fun. It's been so fun to get to share our film um, with, like you said, so many festivals all over the world. It's so cool. Um, I think for me too, I mean, this is such a passion project for us for the last 10 years. Um, and I, I might have said this to you before the last time we spoke, but, uh, you know, just making the, the feature itself would have been enough for me. Um, but the fact that we got into South by Southwest and then so many other wonderful festivals around the U.S. And I just got back from the Munich International Festival. Um, that's just been kind of mind blowing and really exciting. Uh, but the, the audiences have been interesting in every one. I mean, we've gotten really positive and lovely responses yeah. um, all around, which is, is so lovely. Um, and we've had some sold out houses, which is also really fun. Um, but I was a little, we were a little nervous about the German audiences just because we didn't know. I mean, we we kind of at that point had an idea, we had done, I think four festival, five festivals before going to Munich. Um, so we kind of had an idea of how it was playing to American audiences, um, but we weren't sure what, what it was gonna be over there, but they loved it. They got the humor in a way that yeah. I think some Americans did not. They laughed a lot at our, our first screening in particular, uh, which was just really delightful. Um, and then weirdly I discovered, I guess I knew this, but that we have a couple of references to Germany in our film, <laughs> which I didn't really realize until I was watching it again with the German audience. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's funny. So. I love that it's one of those films that you can watch again and again, and then you like pick up on little things. I remember from the short, that t-shirt that you have in the short made its uh -huh. way all the way to the feature, which is like, yeah, such a cute little Easter egg. And like you were just saying, I think what's been so interesting about Ben and Suzanne is that you've had the opportunity to live with this character for 10 years. How did you initially find your way into Suzanne? And did that differ as you continue to step back into her shoes for each of the different little projects? That's a great question. So the first the first short that we shot 10 years ago is about a couple, it's Ben and Suzanne, um, and they're drive, Ben is driving her to the airport so she can go off yeah. and work at this NGO overseas. And it kind of flashbacks to these lovely moments in their relationship before then as they're saying goodbye. Um, and when I auditioned for that short film, which is when I first met Sean, um, I had just had a similar drive to the airport. So in that sense, it kind of mirrored my experience, uh, my own personal experience. Um, and so I kind of found a hook in it in, the, in that sense. Um, mm -hmm. And then I think aesthetically and thematically, Sean and I really aligned on a lot of things for Suzanne. So it didn't feel too far away from me in that first, um, in that first short. And then as the years have progressed, stepping back into her, I mean, I think I've just gotten to know more about her in a way. Um, and the character has grown a lot. All, 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 both of the characters have grown a lot 
um, just through our my and Sethia's friendship with Sean, um, our director, um, and getting to know him better and understanding the elements of his personality that are seeping mm -hmm. into the script and then the elements of our personality that are seeping into the script. But I think the Suzanne in the first short from 10 years ago, or the difference between those two Suzannes, um, I think the Suzanne now in the feature is a lot more grounded in some ways, a lot more uh, independent and a little more, um, I guess, purposeful. Mm -hmm. um, I think younger Suzanne had a bit of a starry-eyed idea of what things might be. And then I guess current Suzanne is really just dealing with a lot of, uh, you know, rough, not rough, just her expectation, her, her reality isn't what she was expecting it to be. Yeah. And so she's kind of dealing with the loss of that in a way, um, while also trying to navigate this new phase of her relationship with her partner who's coming over to visit her and kind of interrupting her new new routine and new day-to-day -day space. Um, so it, 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 there's more of a maturity yeah. to the, the current iteration of the character. Yeah, that evolution is very slice of life. What's the update on the third short that you all filmed? Yeah. Is it still in post-production? Is it coming out? It's still in post. I think we we had very ambitious plans to um, <laughs> to edit that and get that ready um, before this whole festival tour kicked mm. off. But I, that's that's been the majority of Sean's time, I think, over yeah. the past few months. Um, so that's still in post. But that was such a fun um, project to film. And actually, my first time in Sri Lanka was um, to make that short. Sean and I flew out there. Um, he was visiting his dad for a week and he was like, do you want to come with me and we'll shoot something on super eight? And I said, yeah, of course, obviously the answer to that is yes. Um, so we had a really wonderful trip. We all, we piled in a van with Sean's entire family basically and drove around the South coast of Sri Lanka and shot this, mm -hmm. shot this short that will eventually become the noble intentions of Suzanne Hopper. And will probably be um, not as, as lighthearted to watch as it was to <laughs> film. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, exci I'm excited to to get to that place. The footage looks really beautiful. I'm excited for that to come out as well. And, you know, there was such a community that came together to bring this feature to life. Who were the people in your own life, though, who influenced your journey as a storyteller? Oh, gosh. I would say my dad is a big influence. Um, he was a teacher, a professor of astrophysics. Yeah. Um, very, so smart. Um, but he was a college professor. And he was a real, he was a wonderful storyteller just in his own demeanor and his very like gregarious. And I think I picked up a lot of that from him, even though I, I don't think he would have considered himself a performer in any way. He did have one um, at the college that he taught at. He did uh, have one like cameo role in a play. They were doing a production of Galileo and they let him like run on and say a line, um, which he like loved. Um, but he, he definitely was, I think kind of a, subconscious influence in myself as a storyteller. And then my parents both really loved the arts. So I grew up um, going to see theater all the time, mm. going to see movies. My dad and I would go to the movies all the time. Um, so I, I, that was just kind of part of the environment for me growing up. It was like, you know, creating your own stories, it's always been part of your creative DNA. How has your work as a writer and producer impacted the way that you approach your work as an actor and interpret scripts and characters like this and vice versa? That's such a good question too. Um, I think I came to writing a little bit later. Um, well, I came to writing in kind of a roundabout way. When I was in college, I studied at the Experimental Theater Wing at NYU, which is all about physically based acting and creating your own work. So I, mm. I made a lot of pieces when I was at ETW um, and I really loved that and really enjoyed that. And then uh, a little bit after college, I was in a, a theater ensemble for uh, I think eight years right after school which was wonderful and, and such a great, you know, home base for me as an artist. Um, and at some point during that time, I was like, I actually, I, I just want to be a performer. There are other people who are writers who do this and like, that's their lane and, and they're really good at that and they should write. And I don't need, I should not write. I should just be an actor or not just be an actor because I think actors contribute a lot to the story as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I kind of shied away from writing for many years. Um, and then at a certain point I was like, I, actually would like there are some stories that I would like to tell and I kept trying to outsource the writing to other people <laughs> <laughs> and 
And finally, uh, finally, one of my friends was like, I think you just need to write this yeah. um, and just sit down and do it. So that's that actually was kind of liberating for me. Um, and I really enjoyed that process. And I, I've written, well, I co-wrote that first one. And then I've written another short film uh, that we just shot uh, just before we went to South by so a few months ago and that's in post-production which I'm very excited about um, and I have a couple more ideas of things that I'm excited to write which is a nice place to be in as opposed to being scared to write something um, but I think I what what I've always loved as an actor is as a actor in theater in particular is new plays and new play development I think that mm. process of development is so fun and so exciting and so I I think in a way even though I haven't been writing over all of these many years there's an element of contributing to the story um, that I've always really enjoyed and so um, I think my acting is kind of has always kind of been informed by the writing element yeah. and the the writing is I'm always thinking about like well how does this sound how does does this feel truthful when I'm trying to put it on the page and then as a producer it's really it's just uh, a way to get things done so <laughs> Because at a certain point, you know, if you want to, yeah. you want to do something, you kind of have to make it yourself. Um, and if you want, if you want to work, you got to make some work sometimes. So, and it, the producer was was more just not wanting to wait around for the stories that I wanted to tell. I also love that this film is a love letter to cinema. What's been that film that's impacted your life and journey as a storyteller? Oh my gosh, there are so many. There are so many, Kevin. That's such a hard question. <laughs> uh, one film that I that was really exciting to me when I watched it is um, a film called Daisies by Vera Ch Chitlova. I'm, I'm totally butchering her last name, but she is a Czech new wave uh, filmmaker. And this is one of like the first feminist new wave films. It's basically these two women who are um, it's about capitalism. These two women are like running around like wreaking havoc. Um, and it's totally bizarre and totally great. And there's just this unbridled, um, sense of mischief in it that I really loved and so that that film has really stuck with me stylistically um because it's so it's so different from you know your your mainstream I watched Twisters last night which was so much fun yeah um but like obviously like very different stylistically from you know a Czech new wave film so I think um both of those films are exciting to me to watch but that was one of the first ones that really was like oh wow how interesting film can do this too and still be exciting mm -hmm. Um, and you've also said in previous interviews that you have such a thirst for learning. I feel like as a storyteller, you always take away something from each project. What did you learn about your own path on this 10-year journey of Ben and Suzanne? I think I just learned to trust a little more um, because I think, you know, you our situation has been such a dream because it's rare that you do a short film with a couple of random people and then become very dear friends and continue to be creative collaborators for the next 10 years on one particular project. Um, but that feels really special. And I think for many years, I wasn't sure if the feature would ever happen because we were like, ah, oh, like what a pipe dream. Of course, like we'll make a feature. Um, and I think just to trust in the work and to trust in the relationships that you've made um, and, you know, even if we hadn't been able to make this feature for one reason or another, like my work has grown from my collaboration with these two people. Um, so I, I think just in terms of having, finding a way to have an artistic life, yeah. to kind of just trust that things will happen and unfold the way that they, that they need to. Mm -hmm.